All right, what's up, ladies and gents? Um, this video is going to be a uh, kind of a beginner's guide to Grim Souls. Uh, now, I'm not really, I don't really do this sort of video. Um, I mostly do private videos that I just do for data collection so I can, you know, do my normal gameplay without having to think about, you know, how many, counting how many hits a weapon has for durability or armor or stuff like that. I just play how I normally play, and then when I need to get that information, I can just go back and re-watch the video that I made. Um, and I've, I've been doing that for a while now. I'm, I do data collection and whatnot. I have that for my own little spreadsheet. Uh, and I offered that information to a guy on Discord by the name of Stop Gamer. Um, you might know him from Reddit as well. Uh, and he, he watched it and he was asking me about stutter stepping, about how I, uh, how I stutter step so quickly. Uh, apparently other people have some difficulties with this. Uh, so he asked me to do a video with, uh, a developer option on which shows a uh, touch interface or something like that. Uh, so as you can see, anytime I touch the screen, uh, there's a little white dot that appears. So that will show exactly what I'm doing, when I'm pressing what buttons, how I'm dragging across the screen, all of that stuff. Um, you can see I'm, I'm level 99, so I've had a pretty good amount of practice with this stuff. Um, I will say, however, I am by no means a master of stutter stepping. Uh, that's just kind of, you know, something that you get through practice. And I've, I've only been playing the game for about a month. Uh, maybe just a little bit over a month now. Uh, but I'm also gonna take the opportunity to make this a beginner's video, so to speak. Uh, beginner's video on how to farm T1. Now, there are already other uh, videos about that. Uh, matter of fact, another guy on Discord by that goes by the name of Hacks, um, I believe he goes by some different names on Reddit and YouTube, but uh, I know him as Hacks from Discord. Uh, he made a wonderful video not too long ago about how to farm uh, T1 zones efficiently, and I would definitely recommend uh, looking that up. Uh, I believe somewhere in the video title he, he said his name. It was like Hacks Guide to something or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll find the link and put it in the description of this video. Uh, so check out the description, maybe, if you want to if you want to see that. Uh, but there are already many other videos about that. But I, I thought to myself, and I, I decided, you know what? They do show how to do things efficiently. They don't necessarily discuss tactics. They don't necessarily discuss the uh, loot drops and things that you would definitely want to pick up. Um, or at least not, not the ones that I've seen. They mostly just say, you know, this is how you kill enemies. And, you know, this is what you need to be concerned with as, as far as efficient farming and not using a ton of food and all that. Um, so I figured I'd make a video about this while I'm already making one for, for, uh, Stop Gamer. Anyway, so as you can see, uh, I'm coming along with a pickaxe and a couple of stone, uh, axes. Now, I didn't mean to bring this stone. <laughs> I was actually intending to drop that off on one of my workbenches, but I forgot about it. Uh, some people like to bring only as much food as they need. Uh, for a T1 zone, you probably only need eh, roughly two to four fried leeks uh, or, you know, about the same amount of jerky or berry juice or something like that. Now, as far as weapons, I mostly use the club. The club is my primary weapon for a T1 zone. Um, and it's the weapon that you're going to start out with when you're low level. My alternate weapon, however, is a one-handed sword, which, as you can see, is much more powerful. You're not going to have that option uh, as a low level uh, when you start off. Uh, as a matter of fact, this will be your secondary weapon that you first unlock, essentially. I don't remember exactly what level you have to be to unlock it, because as you see, it, it doesn't show the, uh, the level requirement for unlocking it once you've already unlocked it. <laughs> um, so... Uh, that would be your next best weapon. I'm not a big fan of the cart fill, personally. 
Um, it's 24 damage, but... And it has, it has some pretty good range. That's why most people really like it, is because of the range. Um, it allows you to deal with a lot of enemies without getting hit at all. Um, however, if you're stutter stepping properly, you really don't need that at all, to be perfectly honest. Now, this armor here is actually just something that I got from an AI player that I killed uh, on my last run. You do not need any kind of armor whatsoever. Um, I just, you know, it's, it's tier one armor and it's mostly broken, so I just, I wear it because I'm not gonna keep it anyway. It's not really worth anything. Uh, so, without further ado, let's go ahead and get in here. Now, what is stutter stepping? Uh, stutter stepping is something that we do in order to break the end of an attack animation. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here in a second. So, we go ahead and just hold down this button. You can see, you know, the attack speed of the club is eh. It's, it's okay. Uh, but it's not anything amazing. However, what we can do is we can actually move in order to end the attack animation early. So, what I can do... If I cannot get lag... Okay, well, I'm getting a whole bunch of lag, so that's actually kind of disappointing. Um, <laughs> but the point uh, is, and it actually might be a lot easier for me to do once uh, once an enemy pops up here and starts coming at me. <laughs> um, but the point of it is, you want to land your hit, and more specifically, you want to see the orange damage number pop up. Once you see the orange damage number, which is the color of damage for your weapons, so like that, like that. Uh, you know, damage being done to you is red, damage being done to opponents is orange. Uh, once you see that number pop up, essentially what you want to do is you just want to you just want to flick the uh, the analog stick or digital analog stick, I guess, uh, in a particular direction. Uh, generally, you want to flick it away from the enemy. And if you do that correctly, you can dramatically increase your attack speed. Uh, you can do that with any weapon, pretty much. Uh, however, the slower the attack speed of the weapon, the easier it is to pull off. So with something like a dagger, uh, which has a really fast attack speed, or a uh, scimitar, uh, it's actually a little bit more difficult to pull off a stutter step with those. So that's kind of stutter stepping. I can't really explain it much more than that, so you'll just have to uh, take a look at the stutter steps that I do along in this video. Now, uh, moving on from that, there are a lot of uh, beginner tactics that people don't necessarily talk about. So, when you're first starting out, obviously you want to be efficient uh, with your farming. And all of those other videos that I mentioned that will tell you how to farm T1 zones efficiently, they can absolutely tell you how to do that. But the thing is, you need to essentially have a startup uh, stockpile of resources to a certain extent to make a lot of those things work. Uh, in the older versions, the cart fill was actually a lot cheaper to make. Uh, as far as I know, it didn't even use cloth, or if it did, it used, like, very little cloth. Oh, and here's an AI player. Uh, I don't want to fight him, however, though, because I, I don't have a healing item on my quick slot, and I had, like, I don't know, 40? Oh, yeah, 48 HP, so that probably would have ended badly, especially since I'm having lag issues, which is unfortunate. Um, but... The main thing that you need to worry about for when you're starting out is the fact that you don't have huge stockpiles of food. Um, now, you don't have huge stockpiles of food to start off with, so a lot of the food that you're going to use to heal yourself when you start out in T1 zones is going to be these berries, and I particularly advise you to eat holly berries. Paw berries are used for cooking berry juice, and for later on, they're going to be used to make spirits which you're going to use in creating a lot of really awesome healing items later on. So, you've also probably, you'll, 
Any anyone who's experienced in this game, at least you know beyond maybe an hour, knows that eating these holly berries has a chance to make you sick. The same can be said of raw meat. If you eat raw meat, you have a chance to make yourself sick. Now, if you will notice right down here, there's the number 40 right next to a little running man figure. Um, and that is your movement speed. So it's a little trick that some people probably know, but may never actually acknowledge that they know it. They might notice it and think nothing of it, never think of it again. But the standard movement speed is actually 100. I am down to 40. What that means is I have eaten enough of these berries that I am now sick and I need to vomit. So that's a little trick that you can, you can use uh, if you leave the zone or something and you need to heal. Uh, generally, you don't want to use berries anyway to heal, uh, at least not outside of a zone because you don't know if something might quickly rush you when you come back in. Um, but that is a good way to know if you've eaten too many berries and you need to throw up. So, <laughs> I'm going to have to throw up as soon as I get in here, but that's okay because nothing was really, uh, nothing was really coming after me besides the AI player. Leaving the zone will reset the AI, so he is gone, and now I just have to deal with an annoying leper. Now, early on, you're not going to be super proficient at being able to stutter step. Uh, again, it's, it's something that takes practice. Um, I'm, I'm level 99 and I'm not going to lie to you guys, I, I don't always stutter step perfectly. I have, I have issues with it sometimes, uh, especially if I'm using a weapon that I'm not especially proficient with, uh, something that I don't use a lot, like a scimitar. I don't, I don't really use those a whole lot. Uh, I'm trying to save them for when dungeons come out, which, uh, from what we've heard recently, uh, shouldn't be too much longer. Uh, there's supposed to be an update this week about, uh, something about an event, I believe, where, uh, some NPC of some kind is going to test our skills and we're gonna do something, and I guess, from what I gathered, uh, if you do the event successfully, uh, you may be able to get the key to the Forsaken Dungeon. Uh, something along those lines, anyway. Uh, but yeah, you really need resources when you're starting out the game. Uh, a lot of people will tell you, will show you like how to do a full clear uh, in in tier one, and you'll you'll kill all the enemies and you'll do it really efficiently. But the thing is, like early on, you need a lot of wood. Um, you need wood just to make the floors in your base, you need it to make the walls, you need it to make chests and such. But the most important use for wood early on, really, uh, is getting it turned into planks as soon as you can make the... where is it? Carpenter's bench, right here. Uh, it's necessary for cutting planks. Uh, and the reason why you want to cut it into planks, not only is because you need planks for the upgraded walls and floors and such, uh, you also need it for uh, creating the level 2 chests, the soldier's chests. Uh, but mostly you need it for fuel. Uh, for those of you who may not know this, uh, wood is a fine source of fuel. However, if you turn that wood into planks, then the planks will actually last 50% longer than the wood uh, that you would normally use. So that's honestly, in my opinion, the most important use for wood, is just grabbing tons of wood, turning it into planks, and using it for fuel. Uh, because early on, the sooner you can get a large stockpile of food, uh, the better off you are. Because certainly there's something to be said about, you know, trying to do these things efficiently, like you just saw right there. You know, I'm, I'm proficient enough with stutter stepping that if I get a sneak attack on a leper, and I don't have to deal with any lag, um, that I can kill a leper with a club and not get hit at all. Um, so I take no damage even though I've, I've been able to take out an enemy. Now, that's... I don't know why that happened, but... Uh... <laughs> Excuse that, that was my, that was my TV, uh, <laughs> suddenly turning on for no apparent reason. 
Um, actually, you know what? Let me just turn the TV completely off. I just paused that instead. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, sure, you're going to want to be efficient, but sooner or later, you need healing items. You need to be able to use these items to heal you, and you're going to have to deal with all kinds of other things, especially moving forward when you start going into the Tier 2 and Tier 3 zones. So the sooner you have a huge supply of food, the safer you are. Now, it's not really a huge deal if you die in that, sure, you're going to lose whatever you have on you, assuming that you died in an area, I believe, I believe if you die in an AI base or in one of the, at the, one of the dungeons, the top floors or the ground floor or whatever you want to call it of the dungeon i believe you can actually go back there get your body and get the uh things you had back however if you're in just a standard uh zone area i guess uh i would say um you know a tier one wood zone a tier two stone zone whatever and you die then you know that's that's it your your body is gone it's lost forever anything that you had on you is just gone and that seems a little harsh, but at the same time, a lot of the things that you're going to be losing are just the things that you see here. You know, you're going to be losing your, your pickaxes, you're going to be losing that stone, uh, you're going to be losing your berries, um, and a few other things. But those are all things that you can get back in a single Tier 1 run. Um, you know, you'll be losing... Uh, your your club and your alternate weapons and whatever food you took with you. Um, it's not a super huge deal. I mean, the most annoying part really is that you have to go get all those things back. It's time wasted more than anything else. Um, but early on, I would say you really don't have to fight all of the enemies until you have stockpiles of food. I, I personally, I would rather be safe than sorry. That's that's just how I play. Um, a lot of people have asked me be on Discord because I I like to do things a little bit differently than some other people. Um, a lot of people will say, you know, there's no reason to go to a tier two zone because there's nothing you can get there that you can't get at the uh, the tier one zones. And for the most part, yeah, they're correct. Uh, I just, I have reasons and methods that work for tier two that allow me to get certain things, not everything, but certain things that I want uh, in a more, how shall I say, efficient manner uh, than doing it in a tier one zone, at least, at least time wise. Um, the only reason I'm doing a full clear here is just, uh, again, to showcase, you know, a series of uh, fights with enemies using stutter steps. Uh, so you can kind of get a feel for it, how you need to do it. Um, I should also mention, I am more proficient at doing stutter steps when I am going to the right. Um, I have a pretty difficult time doing stutter steps to the left, um, or at least far more difficult than I should. Um, I should also mention, don't do not do what I just did right here. Don't uh, don't fight multiple lepers who are all hitting at you on this at, at all at once. It's just, it's, it's not a good idea. It's not efficient. Uh, for me, it doesn't matter, because I have all the food in the world, and I can easily handle this entire zone uh, and clear it out of enemies, you know, easy. <laughs> It really doesn't matter for me. Uh, however, if you're if you're not me, if you're not you know a person with 20 fried leeks in their inventory, which is probably more healing than you would need to clear this zone out five or six times, um, <laughs> then you know you definitely don't want to do that. Um, it's it's just a really It'll eat up a lot of your food, it'll eat up a lot of your armor, if you're wearing any armor, and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, so really, I guess to summarize, my main tip is, don't go for a full clear if it's your first time playing the game. Uh, your first couple of runs, you need so much wood 
to get your your base up and running you need so much wood to uh, start making food you're gonna want to be making berry juice you're gonna be wanting to make fried leeks you're probably gonna want to make uh, probably steaks early on until you can make what is it the uh, meat dryer down here yeah uh, I don't remember exactly what level that was I want to say it was level 20 something you had to be to uh, make that but I mean there's just it, you're, you're gonna need wood for all of those things and uh, later on you're gonna need it even more when you start operating your furnaces where are they all oh, the smelters sorry when you start operating those and start making copper constantly because I mean you're gonna need copper for making these one-handed swords you're gonna need those for armor uh, you're gonna need them for making level three floors and doors and stuff. Uh, I mean, there's so many things that you need copper for, uh, and that's a constant demand on your wood, constant. Um, you're just in constant need of wood in this game. Now, eventually, you do get to a point uh, where you'll end up with more wood than you really need because you're just constantly processing it into planks, and it takes uh, what is it, four minutes for one wood to get turned into wood, one plank? And you can put a stack of 20 on there, so that's like 80 minutes, which would be an hour and 20 minutes or so. Uh, so, I mean, you know, <laughs> you only need 40 wood every hour and 20 minutes, and I've gotten twice that, over twice that, in the last 10 minutes or so. Now, the main thing I really want to address that a lot of people don't is these loot caches. Now... There are a lot of good things you can get in these loot caches. Um, things that are really important to get, actually. And I'll show you why when I get back to the base. Uh, let's see, how much health do I have? Uh, I'll just smash all those berries. Uh, throw up all over the loot that we're trying to pick up. Uh, so, honey barrels. Uh, these are extremely important to grab. I would say grab them at every possible opportunity. Oh, hi, player. Uh, okay, lag is being a problem. <laughs> uh, let me see. What do you have for me? Some more wood? That's nice. A little bit of stone. I actually don't need that extra. Uh, you brought me some copper. How very thoughtful of you. Copper shards, that is. And we'll go ahead and take the armor as well. But, uh... Ooh, actually, let me, uh... You know what? I really don't need this raw meat. I would say early on, absolutely keep picking up all of the raw meat. Uh, you definitely want to be hunting down all the deer, all of the wolves, all of the bears. Um, and you want these hides, and you want their raw meat. The raw meat is obvious. You need that for food. However, the hides you're going to want to use with the tanning rack in order to make leather. You might be thinking, okay, well, what do you need leather for? Well, for one, you wouldn't necessarily think about leather with a, with a weapon, but as you can see here, uh, every one-handed sword that you make is going to require 10 copper ingots, it's going to require 6 leather, and it's going to require 6 pine planks. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you use one-handed swords the way that I do, which is often, <laughs> uh, you can very quickly burn through all of that. Um, and then if you look at, yes, this is the tier two uh, armor. You know, that's seven leather right there. That'll also be seven leather. There's six leather, four leather. So if you want to make a full set of tier two armor, that's going to require 7, 14, 20. You're going to require 24 leather. So that is a full stack of these animal hides and four extra. Just make one set of armor. Um, and that, that cost certainly goes up as you get to the higher uh, armor levels. Or it can, at least, certainly. Uh, some of these don't require that much leather. Um, and then there, there are other weapons that require leather. The flange mace, which is a, a nice weapon that people use a lot of the time. Uh, as well as the falchion and the bastard sword. Um, but yeah, you, you need leather for pretty much all of these. Well, except for the bronze armor. 
Except for the smaller pieces of bronze armor. They actually don't require that much leather. Um, but yeah, I, I find that I, when I was initially trying to stock up on armor and weapons so that I could do the uh, tier 3 stuff uh, and get even better armor and weapons, that I was constantly running out of leather. So that was an issue. So getting back to this, all of these items that you see in here, the fibula, the cords, the candle, the wire, and the copper shards, all of those things are things that you cannot craft. Under no circumstances are you able to craft these. You can't convert them into or convert them from another resource. No. Now the copper shards, you can actually convert into copper ingots. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I keep picking them up. Even at this point when I have like two chests full of them back at my, back at my base pretty much. Um, however, you also need them for a lot of other things. Now, cords are pretty important for building a number of things. I believe one of the initial things that you need it for is the sewing table. Yes, you need 10 cords in order to make that. So, it's fairly important to pick those cords up. Um, I would say... Whew, what would I get rid of? Um, well, I guess for me, I'm going to get rid of the meat. I really don't need the meat. Um, candles are important for building one thing in particular, I believe. Uh, and then after that, all they are is a trade item uh, for the merchants. Now, it is a pretty decent trade, if I remember correctly. I don't remember exactly. I have a vague idea of what they trade for. I want to say it's a, uh, a weapon, and it's a pretty decent weapon. Um, but uh, it's either a weapon or an armor. Uh, I don't generally care about much other than getting weapons or armor um, however you know it's it's uh, it's something that you you're not gonna get that many of uh, in tier one zones and actually even in tier two zones and tier three zones you don't get that many I mean if I'm lucky in a tier three zone I'll get double digits of these but other than that you know it's just something that you might as well pick up it's pretty easy to grind these up in tier one zones and you're going to need a lot of stone and a lot of wood to build up your base anyway so you're going to be making lots of tier one trips might as well pick these things up uh the wire uh that is very similar to the candles in that it's a trade item uh and actually it's a great trade item because 20 of these a full stack of wire will allow you to trade for the Tier 4 armor chest piece, the bronze halberd, I believe is how that's pronounced. Uh, and as you can see, it uh, it's got a lot of armor on it. It's pretty nice. Um, I have uh, about a half a chest of those, so that's that's pretty nice. Uh, I would definitely say pick those up. Now you might be thinking, well, you're full, so what are you going to get rid of? And that is true. Uh, what was in this other sack here? Okay, uh, let me go ahead and grab those and those because I already have a stack of them. Uh, empty flasks. You might be tempted to grab these early on, but I would say, honestly, I don't see any point. Um, every single day, uh, you will get in your storage here, you will get one flask of water and one uh, barrel of honey one of those uh, you'll get one of each of those every single day so if you keep playing for a while you're gonna have a bunch of flasks anyway um, I should probably hurry the hell up and get out of here because I am I am eating up food and water sitting here explaining all of this to you guys uh, let me see here uh, to be perfectly honest I, I have plenty of rope sitting at my base I have like two chests full of it so I guess I would say I want the wire over that. Same thing with the cloth. I have two or three chests full of that. So I don't really need more. Plus the flax fiber that you see here, uh, when you put that on a sewing table, you're gonna get you're gonna get that turned into 10 cloth anyway. So as long as you're bringing flax fiber, you can turn that into rope on a tanning rack or into cloth on the sewing table. So as long as you bring back 20 flax fiber every time, you're bringing back rope and cloth with you essentially anyway. So any rope and cloth that you have 
in your inventory when you're going through a tier one zone is essentially just extra to be perfectly honest uh now rope seems really important early on uh let me go ahead and yeah i'll just do that and we'll get out of here uh actually was there a third sack lane around here sometimes there's a third one in tier one zones uh i don't see one okay so uh early on it seems like rope is super important um, you, you use it for a bunch of things early on, but honestly, guys, I'm going to say that a lot of those things are unnecessary. Well, some of them are unnecessary, and I'm going to go ahead and show you why. So, early on, uh, the things that you're going to be using rope for are probably a rugged sack. Uh, you may go ahead and make a torch or two to deal with the night guest. Uh, certainly I'd advise you to make one or two at least, just to have them around if you have to do anything at night. Uh, preferably I farm the tier one zones, uh, and actually the tier two zones as well. I farm those during the day, and then when night comes, I'll go ahead and go up to this tier three zone that you see up here, and I'll go look for a night cache. Um, but initially, you're going to be using a lot of your rope probably to make this cheap armor. And it's not a super bad idea to make any of this armor. Um, it's not my style, because I always, I always knew that regardless, I'm going to be moving on past that eventually. And I'm going to be moving on to the uh, tier 3 armor that you see here. Um, and eventually I was, I, I knew I was even going to move on past that and make tier 4 armor. Uh, which I've made a little bit of, but bronze, uh, bronze is a pain in the ass to make. <laughs> it really is. Uh, so I stick mostly to making tier 3 armor, uh, for the various, uh, things that I actually need armor for. But early on, you're gonna mostly be using your rope to make stakes and you see here they require eight stakes they also require these copper shards that i picked up that's another reason why you need to build or need to pick up those copper shards uh, again you can't craft them you you just have to pick them up in loot caches which is why they're so important now they take eight rope a piece to make and there is a quest if i remember correctly where is it to make Yes, this right here. You need to build 20 stakes for a quest. Now, it would seem like, okay, well, you do the quest, and then you get a free uh, crafting point up there. And you're like, all right, cool, crafting points. That's awesome. I want those. Uh, because you want to be able to make everything. Uh, here's here's the thing, though, guys. As you, uh, as you see me scrolling through this list, all of the things that I can't make have that little green thing at the bottom of them. This is, of course, uh, being recorded as of version 1.0.6, but let's take a look at all the things that I cannot craft, guys. Cannot be obtained, or the design can be obtained in dungeons, which means I can't craft that anyways. Same with the powder bomb, the heavy crossbow, the buckler, the leather pannier, the halberd, the iron shield, the boat, uh, the torture chair, uh, the order standard, uh, you know, need I go on that, uh, well actually this you, you could technically make, uh, except it requires birch planks which are not in the game as of this moment. But you can see that I essentially have unlocked everything that you could possibly craft in the game that doesn't require you to go to a dungeon to grab the design. And you can also see that I have 28 leftover points. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. I have completed... Let me see. 1, 2, 3... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... I believe it's 18? Yes, 18. I have completed 18 of the current 20 quests in the game. So... If you look at my crafting points, I have 28. Subtract that 18, and I have 10 extra over or extra leftover crafting points. 10 points that even at level 99, I can't use on anything. So 
even without the doing any of the quests, you will have enough points to build or to, or to unlock everything you could possibly build in the game. So one of the things that I tell people on Discord a lot is that you really do not have to rush the quests. It's nice to have them there. It's nice to make the Raven's Cage as quickly as possible. That way you can start doing them because a lot of these things are very, very simple. You know, build 10 walls. Well, you're going to be doing that anyway. You know, you're going to craft two torches. Okay, well, you're going to want to do that so you can fend off the night guest anyway. Uh, Secret of the Night. Gather 50 stones. You're going to be, if you're making a base like I am, you're going to be gathering thousands of stones. Forget 50. But you might as well get the quest out of the way. But for something like, say, this quest, build 20 stakes, if we go and take a look at the stakes, that's 8 rope for 1. So that quest alone requires you to get 160 rope, which is 8 full stacks. Uh, which I left behind, I believe it was 8 rope. So, I mean, that's going to be, you know, assuming you get something close to that, that's like 20 trips, which seems like a lot, but here's the thing. You're going to be making way more than 20 trips just for your wood and your stone and your copper and all those other basic resources. So, you know, stakes are a thing that you use rope for, but... Honestly, once you've made those stakes, that's pretty much it. I mean, you'll use rope to make soldier's chests, but beyond that, a lot of the things that you're going to be making, you know, one-handed swords, uh, well, I guess the tier 2 armor does actually require a lot of rope. Uh, but other things, the other weapons that you may or may not choose to make, uh, the higher levels of armor... Well, I guess I guess all of the boots I think use rope. Uh, oh no, the riveted boots don't. Okay, but like a lot of them, they don't require rope anymore. So rope is a resource that's very intensive at the beginning of the game, but later on you just find that you don't have a use for it, and you just start accumulating massive amounts of it with no particular use for it. So I would say. You know, what, I, what I'm trying to say here, guys, is you need to prioritize what resources you bring back. Because as you've noticed, by now, I'm sure, I have a leather pack, which gives me this entire row of uh, inventory space that you guys at the start of the game are not going to have. Um, until you've made the rugged sack, you're not even going to have these resource or inventory slots unlocked either. So you really have to make sure that you are picking up things that you absolutely need early on. Uh, leveling up actually isn't that hard in this game. It's just a little bit of a grind. I mean, you're just going to keep going to the Tier 1 Wood Zone. You're going to keep going to the Tier 1 uh, uh, Stone Zones over here. You're going to pick up stone and copper. You're going to pick up wood. You're going to pick up berries and flax fiber and you're gonna pick up as many things from those loot caches that I mentioned mainly copper shards cords wires barrels of honey uh, candles you're gonna want all of those things uh, and then you know a lot of people who don't do those things later on they get to their base or they get around to starting to build other things and I'll go to my base here a little quicker and show you exactly what you're going to be building. What you need all of these things for. <laughs> if, if, if the game wants to load, anyway. <laughs> uh, so anyways, we're going to go over here and this is the stable. Now, this is actually one of the easier things uh, to, to build in the game. Uh, and this was actually one of the one of the resources that I didn't find in the uh, loot caches at the Tier 1 zone is chains. Iron chains. Those are actually a fairly rare resource, and you can only find them in loot chests. That's the only places you're going to find those. Uh, but you need 20 of those uh, for the stable. 40 cords, 40... 
copper shards, 10 candles, five of those rugged sacks, and then you're gonna need to find a saddle, uh, which I find saddles most often at events and tier three zones. So if you're looking for one of those, I would say look there. As of version 1.0.6, the bridle and the feeding trough are actually not in the game. So that's important to know. But when you go over here to the cart, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, you jump from 40 leather cords to 400. <laughs> you jump from, uh, what was it? What was it? 40 copper? Oops. What was it? 40, uh... Damn it, stop grabbing my chest. Uh... <laughs> this, this is a little bit of an issue I have with my base layout. I need to fix. Yeah, it was 40 copper shards. Okay. And then here you have 500 copper shards. <laughs> you needed 10 for the stable, 10 candles. You need 150 for the cart. You needed 20 chains for the stables. You need 150 for the cart. I mean, I'm, I'm level 99. I have been for some time. And I've been picking up things like cords and chains and all of that. And as you can see, I'm still not done with the cart. I've been grinding for over a month, and I generally play anywhere between 4 to 10 hours a day uh, grinding, depending on how much time I have. And I'm still not done with this, guys, and I probably won't be for at least another week. <laughs> So this is, this is one of the main reasons why I say you really need to pick up the things that you can't craft. I mean, you can, you can craft cloth, you can craft rope, uh, you, can, you can craft all of that stuff. Let me, let me go ahead and start throwing a couple of things on here. I'll make some cloth, even though I have multiple chests of it. This chest over here is nearly full of it, yeah. <laughs> so you can see, I really don't need any more cloth. Um, but those are just things that you're going to accumulate. Uh, early on, most people will say that, you know, you need to pick up as many things as you possibly can. And that is true. But when your space is so limited to just the first two rows, when you don't have these next two rows, you know, when you just have these two rows, guys, you really have to prioritize and make sure that you're picking up things that are vital. Um, at the start, it's pretty much just going to be wood and stone. But once you get your uh, initial backpack, you really need to start picking up copper shards, wire, and candles just so you can do those things. Now, right now, the, uh, the stable and the cart don't have any use in the game. But... Later on, they are going to be important. Um, the stable will allow you to use less energy going around places because you'll have a horse to ride. Uh, the cart supposedly is going to allow us to travel to other lands and such. Uh, if I remember correctly, what was the description in the actual craftable list here? Allows you to build a cart and travel to far off lands. And I don't know what we can do there, but I bet it's going to be fun. <laughs> I bet it's going to be fun. Uh, so anyways, uh, I won't take up any more of your time ranting and rambling here, but uh, people wanted me to do a video about that, so I did a video about it. Hope it, hope it helped those of you who watched it. I don't imagine too many people will watch this, but I don't know, maybe it'll get spread around Reddit or Discord or something at some point. I'll probably get tired of people asking me the same question over and over about how I do things, so I can just reference them to this video. Uh, not that it's really that annoying, but, you know, it's just convenient to say, you know, give them a link to a video rather than having to go through that lengthy conversation on Discord. So, yeah, hope you guys... Ho eh, yeah, I can't even talk anymore. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, I will probably be doing a couple more videos on how I do Tier 2 and Tier 3 runs as well. Uh, but I won't be doing those anytime soon. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to see how I do those, uh, feel free to, uh, to look for it now and then. So, till then guys, see you later.